What is good, YouTube, man? Today I'm back with you guys, with the nation, for another video, man. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, man. So, we got some news, man. We've gotten some interesting news. So, um, I'm going to start off, I'm going to start off with the, you know, the, the not so real the not so uh th this one is probably not gonna happen but it's pretty interesting right it involves the raiders and it involves a big position of need so pro bowler all pro offensive tackle mitchell schwartz um who was recently released by the chiefs he's a free agent we know that right but really quick before I get into too much detail, I have to give a shout out for IC Nate, man. He is the creator of uh of the of today's thumbnail once again. But you know, go check him out. IC underscore Nate. Go check his YouTube page out. But let's get right into the video, man. So look, so so look back where I left off. He is a all pro right tackle, right? Um, and you might be wondering why on earth would the Chiefs let go of an all pro right tackle after there was basically a, a, a shit show in, in the in the Super Bowl, right? Like, why would you get rid of that? And in all honesty, he's been battling with a crazy back injury for the past, I believe, three years. Um, and he is a real tough guy, man. And I honestly, what I like the most about Mitchell Schwartz is not that he's an all-pro, not that he's a pro bowler, but he hasn't missed a game in his career up until last year. Up until last year, he's never missed a single game in his entire career. Now, the reason why I'm talking about Mitchell Schwartz, um, if you read the title or if you looked at the thumbnail a little bit closely, um, there was an interaction with Mitchell Schwartz and a Raider fan. So, I believe there was a, a, a post on Instagram about Mitchell Schwartz and a Raider fan straight up asks and uh, asks Mitchell Schwartz and says, Mitchell Schwartz, become a, uh, you want to be a Raider? Mitchell Schwartz then replies to that comment with one of these, with one of those. We all know that emoji. He he replies with one of those. Now, I mean, listen, man, it's not much. It's not much. We're probably blowing it out of proportion a little bit. But if he ends up becoming a Raider somehow, some way, he knows the the he knows this division. He knows this division. He's been in this division for the last five years. Um, like I said, he's an all pro hasn't missed a game up until last year. Um, and honestly, if we can get him for a full year on a fairly cheap contract, this would allow us to basically go best player available in every single pick of the draft besides the first round or second round, right? Um, he would fill up a huge hole for us, a huge hole. Um, he played four years in Cleveland, five years in KC. Um, the last four years, he's only given up a total of five sacks. And in the last two years, he's given up zero sacks. So, would I want him? A hundred percent. And also, last year, obviously, he only played six games. He only had one holding call against him. Obviously, you know, in a Raiders jersey, the man is going to get all the holding calls on the world. You know what I'm saying? But I would love Mitchell Schwartz to be a, to be a Raider if it were possible. But let's get into the next topic, man. The next topic... Very, very interesting. For those of you who were on my live last night, um, there was some breaking news at the end of the live, right? That the Raiders and um, right and or outside linebacker Melvin Ingram um, and the Raiders have had mutual interest in partnering up this season. And the whole thing was is that they've had mutual interest this offseason, but for the right price. Now, I know that Melvin Ingram had zero sacks last year. He was hurt. This and the third, but I'm going to come out and say it. I did not want him. I still am kind of, you know, why would we get him? But look, if he were to become a Raider, this defensive line will completely be a new face next year. You're going to be looking at a Yannick Ngakwe, a David Irving, a Solomon Thomas, uh, uh, if this happens, a Melvin Ingram. This is a completely new defensive line if he's here, right? Um, and what I love the most is that he's at the end of his career, man. He's at the end of his, I believe, what is it, nine-year career. He spent every single year with the Chargers. And honestly, he would absolutely fuck. Man, he would be great 
to fill this role, man. He would be great to fill the void. Obviously, it's not a big void that Arden Key just left at all. But just imagine on passing downs, um, when we have five rushers out there on the field at once, you have Melvin Ingram, Yannick Ngakwe, Max Crosby, David Irving, Cleveland Furrow, all out there at one time. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, obviously, that would hinder the reps of Solomon Thomas, who got his $5 million, the same as Quentin Jefferson, the same as uh, Darius Fallone, the same as um, Kendall Vickers. But honestly, would I mind? Not at all. Um, the key word to all of this putting together was the Raiders have had mutual interest with uh, reuniting Melvin Ingram with defensive coordinator Gus Bradley, but for the right price so what that tells me and what that tells everybody else is that look they've been talking they've been going back and forth and right now it's probably all about the money honestly i mean you're about to go into your 10th year you want to make some money um i understand if he can come in for the vet minimum which is only i believe three and a half or three million dollars um honestly i would pay him probably up to five million dollars to come in on this team and this defensive line would be completely brand new. Not only is he very athletic and can rush the passer with ease, but I know you guys remember that Chiefs game, when uh, the first Chiefs game, when we beat them, and in the second half, we had a spy on Patrick Mahomes the whole game. You know who our spy was that second half? It was Arden Key. He still allowed Patrick Mahomes to get away in certain situations. Now, just imagine if that spy was Melvin Ingram. Oh, my goodness. This defensive line, Melvin Ingram is a spy. He is a pass rush specialist, much like Max Crosby. And just imagine, Melvin Ingram has been getting all his, uh, he's, he's been getting a bunch of experience, picking back of all the knowledge off of Joey Bosa. Imagine if you can have Melvin Ingram teaching Cleveland Furrow and Max and David Irving and all that kind of stuff. Imagine if you could also add uh, and you are you already have Unique and Gakwe to teach them these these new moves and all this kind of stuff. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic for this defense. But let's talk about the last news of the day. And I mean, hopefully there's more, right? But breaking news: um, Rashawn or um, not Rashawn, Rasul Douglas, former Chiefs and Carolina Panther uh, defensive back. He's a corner. Um, the first corner signing of the offseason, hopefully there's more, um, has now been signed by the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, not only is Rasul Douglas only 25 years old, he also used to be partnered up and he was an ex-teammate with our new signee, uh, reunited Carl Joseph. These two, Rasul Douglas and Carl Joseph, both played together at West Virginia at one point. And, I mean, that's cool in my opinion. You know, always I think it's always great to reunite guys that know each other. And let's talk a bit about Rasul Douglas, right? He has a very, very, very good scheme fit for this defense that we're running. He runs this defense perfectly almost. I mean, he's a perfect scheme fit for this team. Um, what I like the most is that he's probably not going to be rushed in to probably start or this kind of stuff, but he had a lot of experience last year. He had 712 snaps uh, played last year with the Carolina Panthers. He played three years with the Eagles. He won a Super Bowl ring with the Eagles, and the year that he won the Super Bowl ring with the Eagles, he had three interceptions that year. I mean, He's a decent corner in my opinion. He had uh, um, he had his basically his best year tackling wise last year with the Panthers, and we all know that we as a Raider Nation we need corners that can tackle, especially in this scheme. So a guy who had a recording of 62 tackles last season with the Carolina Panthers, I'm not mad at it at all. Is it a depth piece? Is it is it to take over Nevin Lawson's role? Is it to fight with Amik Robertson? Is it to fight with Isaiah Johnson? The thing is, is that Rasul Douglas is an outside corner. We're going to leave it at that. He's an outside corner. He does not play the slot. So, in my opinion, he'll probably be fighting it out with a guy like um, Isaiah Johnson. Now, what do I think about the Rasul Douglas signing? I really like it. I really like it. I mean, there's finally depth, a, a bit of depth on this... Um, cornerback room a guy who's won a super bowl champion i mean who's won a super bowl he's a he's a champion of the nfl i mean he took he was part of the of the team that dethroned the patriots 
I like it, man. I really, really like it. He's an ex-Eagle um, and Carolina Panther, Super Bowl winner, 62 tackles last season, three interceptions the year that they won the Super Bowl. Let me know what you guys think, man. Let me know what you guys think. So we've had a bit of news the last couple of days. I'm really, really excited to see what we could do looking forward um, with the Melvin Ingram thing. I actually would love to bring in Melvin Ingram. I would love it 110% if we could bring in Melvin Ingram. Imagine if Melvin Ingram and Max Crosby played on the same side and then Cleveland Furl and Yannick Ngakwe played on the opposite side and smack in the middle was David Irving. Oh, my God goodness man that would be absolutely amazing real quick um do i think that this was so douglas signing means that we're probably out on richard sherman in my opinion it kind of does in my opinion it kind of does because um you're just adding more depth to the corner room right and richard sherman wants to see what teams are going to do things like that in the draft so in my opinion i think that what's best now is probably to to shy away from the Richard Sherman uh, whole deal. Um, and I'm not mad at that at all. If you really want a slot corner, see what you have in Damon Arnett if he wants to move inside or if he's asked to move inside. If not, really go out and see a, a Trill Williams uh, in, in the draft or really see if you can go out and get Brian Poole, right? Really go check those options out. I mean, there's still options. Um, man, uh, really, really quick, if we were to get Mitchell Schwartz, that would be huge for us, man. That would be freaking huge. That would allow us to go basically best player available at every position in the draft. And that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I don't think we've ever been in a position like that to just go best player available. In all the years of me being a Raider fan, in all, the, in all of my years of life. So, yes, Raider Nation, that'll be it for today. Um, a bit of an earlier video because I'm not at work. So, you know... Like I said, it's a bit of an earlier video today, but like, comment, and subscribe as you can. Really comment in the comment section down below. I'm going to be replying to mostly all of the comments. Um, hit the like button if you if you like the video. Subscribe. We're on the road to 1,100, man. We're pretty close. We're pretty close. And um, I'm trying to get some things worked out right now, and I'm trying to see if a couple people aren't going live today. Then I might show up with a live show. So let's get it, Raider Nation. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe if you can. And I'm out. Peace.